14 is our RC, Fox's Tails 40, 40 is Max Reading, you can glen the outsider, 125 to 1, Mishrif solid enough at the head of the market. Yeah, absolutely solid, they've settled on this one, I think ADR's got a great chance, but I did and uh, still do favour um, uh, Mishrif on, uh, on balance. Um, we were wondering on the round course whether you um, whether you wanted to be as wide as um, Adea. That might be the clinching thing between mm. two horses who are on all figures that we've seen and all performances rated uh, very, very close to each other. And we've already seen one horse who disappointed in the arc disappoint again this afternoon. That's not to say Adea will, but it's uh, evidence that it's possible. And there is last year's winner of this race, Adea. <coughs> Tom O'Kan riding for... William Haggis is looking for a, a quick double after Bayid's success in uh, the QE2. So we will be back at Ascot in time for this uh, Champion Stakes, which is due off at 3.50. That's to Bayona, another uh, William Haggis runner. He's about to make his way down. We will go to Leopardstown and then back to Ascot after that. <coughs> and at Leopardstown we've got the listed uh, mile and a quarter event on the card, and we've got four to one joint favourites, Georgeville and Leo de Fury. 30 to 2 Loch Derg, Sensor Style 8, 17 to 2 Lafayette, Bear Story 9s and it's 9s up Heliar, 11 to 1 and bigger uh, the rest. Let's go to the track and uh, join uh, Gary O'Brien. Gary, we got to the quarter to four before we heard from you. <laughs> Hi Angus, yeah, we've been here all along and enjoy sneaky fancy for a lazy and i'm opening myself up to all sorts of ridicule because everybody laughed at this horse last time yet doesn't always find as much as seemed likely off the bridle but i feel he may have needed the run last time i think the change of tactics will be a big help to him i think the shorter trip will be a big help to him there'll be no pressure on jim crowley he'll be full of confidence i'm hoping he'll ride very quietly and pounce late been compared to a Paul Carberry ride. <laughs> we will see if he can do that. Remember Archibald? Jason, what about the two from the King George, the rematch? Yeah, there was £11 weight for age for that particular contest, and that has been shaved down by £7 to a £4 allowance for the youngster on this occasion. And he's also dropping back in trip under different conditions. These were much quicker conditions, and, uh, you know, he seemed to handle it well. He's, he's just about handled everything well so far. Absolutely, Jason. This is a form student's dream in some ways. We've seen these two horses take each other on over a mile and a half on firm ground back in July. You have so many things to weigh up. The impact of the shorter trip, the softer ground, how have they improved relative to each other in the meantime? There's an awful lot going on, and you also have to factor in preparations. Adi Ar comes in here having run just 13 days ago off the back of an interrupted preparation in the arc, whereas Mishraf has had a picture-perfect preparation. Tactics with Ade are the derby winner will be fascinating. Ollie. Yeah. It sure will. John Gosden was saying there doesn't seem obvious pace. Might you make the running with Ade? It's not something we don't ideally want to do, but from William's draw, it's going to allow him to be able to see what's going on, really. As, he, as John quite rightly said, there's no natural pace setter there, so... You know, uh, someone's going to have to unfortunately bite the bullet there at some stage and go forward. But from William's draw, he can just, for the first sort of couple hundred yards, just take a look and see, and, and, and see what's going on. We're not going to go, we're not going to be taking him back. Um, ideally, if there's something there that wants to go a gallop, that would be great. But um, the one thing this horse does is we know he stays. So, uh, you know, William's going to have to make, uh, make a decision early in the race there of whether he does end up parked up on the front or whether hopefully there's something there that we can just slide in behind and, and, and take us into the race. Thanks for the update. Good luck. Brilliant. Thanks. I tell you what, this Max Winnie who's just walking in front of me is a lovely, lovely racehorse. He really is. He is so chilled down here as well. You see Sealaway just getting very warm down here. He finished fifth in the Pretty Lark. The Triumph Alassi is a lovely big strong horse as well. But of the ones that have come down in front of me here, it's hard not to be impressed looking at Max Winnie. Some of his form is top notch. Here comes the Derby winner. How they are. Ran such a good race in the arc. And as he walks past me, he just he he takes your eye out. This fella, he's a real smart looking horse. And Kevin, put this in perspective. The last race, the QE2, you said we had one of the best horses in the world, one of the best races in the world. What have we got here? And we have the two best horses in the world on ratings jointly on one, 127. It does not get any better than this anywhere on the planet. This is exactly the type of race Champions Day was created for, and hopefully this contest delivers as well as the QE2 did. 
half one would be great to have had St Mark's Basilica here as well, wouldn't you? The other one rated on 127 along with Mishrit and Adayar. We've got Jockey Cam on Paul Mulrennan here with Yuke and Glenn, who you'd have to think is up against it, but might provide us with some pretty good footage. Yeah, he's, absolutely. He's going to drop in, isn't he? And uh, we, he'll be our eye at the back of the pack, I would imagine, just waiting to, to see what happens. Seal away. What about him down the bottom? He wasn't that far behind Adair. The man you want to ask is Kevin, because he fancied him in the arc. I did, and he ran great. I had a real shout on two furlongs. He travelled like a dream. He, he travelled very well. I don't think coming back to 10 furlongs will be any problem whatsoever. At the time we were doing this race, I was thinking to myself, well, is the ground soft enough for him? We've had some rain since. I wouldn't like to rule him out. He's a very talented horse. What about the horse, as we see the big crowd here at Asker? But they can't wait for this. Dubai Honour, reading William Haggis, talking about how he's been transformed. Laura Collett playing the part. They've stumped up the 75 grand, and yet, six to one chance. Yeah, I know. I love that about the Haggis team. They really treat every horse as an individual. Everything they need to do to get a bit of improvement out of them, they do. He was gelded, uh, what, uh, before four starts ago, and that's really brought out a big improvement. He's won his last three. He won the pre-dollar in a brilliant fashion. That was a group two over in France on heavy ground from the back of the field, showing a great ability to uh, have a turn of foot on those conditions. I wonder if it's uh, a little bit too firm in a way for him today. He wants it much softer, but the fact that he's been supplemented and he's rapidly improving is exciting. And just remember, this is a big race. For the trainer's title, John Gosden wins with Mishriff. He's right back in it. There's Alazi with Jim Crowley. Will Buick has to win to keep the jockey's title alive. He has to win. What do you think he will do on that day? I'm hoping that Max Swinney goes and zips along up towards the front end or a Dave goes and makes it a bit more of a test and he can drop in. That's what I'm hoping. 13 to 8 Mishriff as he moves forward for an epic looking kick go champion stakes with our big race caller Richard Hiles. Yeah, so much on the line in one particular race at AR. Stall nine, so just stay wide. Goes in there, big horse. And they're all set. Kipco champion stakes. Mile and a quarter. Halfway to Swindley Bottom, they start. Long hold. Couple of anticipating it. They all jump away to a good line. You can Glenn jumps best. Mishrit, one of the slower ones away towards the inside. A Dave and also Fox's tails are the first two to show. William Buick staying wide as Charlie Appleby anticipated. Blue colours for Godolphin. Just want to try and get one off the fence by the time they reach Swindley Bottom. A day are blue colours forced to cover ground. Mishrif, by contrast, is closer to the running rail. Then behind these is Seal Away as William Buick just edges across now on Adayar. And Mishrif now is trapped between Seal Away and Fox's tails. Al Arsi races next as they all just shuffle for position. As a Dave just drops anchor out in front. Max Sweeney towards the back. Dubai Honor. You can Glenn having jump best restrained towards last. So last year's winner, Adave, leads the climb up from Swindley Bottom. Adair uh, out facing the breeze in second, a little free. A couple of lengths to Fox's tails and seal away. Mishriff just moving off the running rail to give himself options there. Just moving one off the fence in the maroon colours with Max Sweeney next. Al Arsi staying close to the rail. Then Dubai Honor and Yukon Glen. Adave by a neck or so, being kept honest by Adair as they stretch past the halfway stage. Seal away is on the outside of Fox's tails. Mishriff in the claret jacket is in fifth place as they continue the climb. Two lengths to Al Arzi, then Max Sweeney as they make their way past the half mile and Adair moves on for William Buick and Mishriff flushed out now begins to try and move forward. Adave is ridden in second, Seal away travels strongly in third, then Mishriff boxes tails. Al Arzi comes under pressure as Adair tries to turn the screw as they turn for home in the champion stakes. Adair up this straight from Seal away in second place who's closed to within three quarters of a length. Mishriff is trying hard but Seal away for the shock as drawn alongside Adair. Mishri from the back, Dubai Honor and Max Sweeney. It's Seal Away who's gone to the front. Mishri digging in. Dubai Honor continues to make ground down the outside. Seal Away for Mikel Barcelona. The last challenger is Dubai Honor who's got to win it a net. Seal Away still holding tough, extending the advantage. The winner of the champion stakes is Seal Away for Mikel Barcelona and Cedric Rossi. Dubai Honor in second, Max Sweeney in third, the big two Mishri for that Day boxes tails on Arcee and you can Glenn. The end of a long season may have told on a few, but it didn't tell on Sealaway. He backs up from the arc 
and his rider Mikel Barcelona begins to salute even as he passes the line. Not quite pour moi, but it certainly was for him that the champion stakes was won. Dubai on the second, McSweeney third, then Mishrif in fifth place at AR, and that means that not only uh, can William Buick now longer win the title as Sheen Murphy is crowned but Charlie Appleby every chance of winning the trainer's title as uh, neither bags huge prize money there take nothing away from Seal away 13 days ago he was fifth in the arc today he's first in the champion states and Richard the Brits and the Irish have plundered all the big French prizes this season it seems